So welcome back to the next section of our webinar, Elevate Your Experience with Vectorwitz 2025. So I'm going to focus on a project that I did a few years ago for a really nice new little eco home. And I'm just showing you a couple of the visuals about how that project sits on the site using the wonderful view transitions. Um, don't forget that if you just set up, say, views and adjust the timing between those transitions, it's a really nice way to create a little animation. And of course, you can use the walkthrough tool just to adjust the view at any time as well. So I've got a couple of these save views set up for the inside of the building as well, as you can see, as well as uh, one for the kind of kitchen area and also one for the sort of living room area. So I think you'll agree the visuals look nice and this is a great way to present. Now, the main feature that I just wanted to focus on just for a second was a really nice little update in 2025. So I'm just gonna navigate through to my design layer and basically, I'm going to show you how to adjust your unit settings in dimensions. And this is a really cool feature that I've really wanted for some time. So let's go to my dimension and just put a regular dimension on. I'm using the Z key to increase my accuracy, just to kind of zoom in. And obviously, I've got a large text size there. So let me just adjust that text size down a bit. Now, here's the little trick. So what I'm going to do is basically go to my architectural dimensions. This is my regular dim. You'll notice that I can also have stacked dims where you can set a secondary dimension, things like feet and inches as well. And you know, this client was actually an elderly client and really wanted feet and inches on the drawing. So it was actually very, very relevant for them. Now, here we go. We're going to go into custom units and basically I'm going to set up a new custom units for meters. You'll note that I can actually set the accuracy for all of these as well. And we click OK. I can also have the dual dimensions in those as well if I need to. But now when I click here, you'll notice that I can basically just drop down to units and easily change that to meters. So once again, let's do another one. Let's go down to custom units. Let's click new. And what we'll do is we'll just type in, in feet and inches this time. Um, and we'll basically do a feet and inches one. So let's select the unit mark and maybe round that up a little bit. We'll click OK. So those unit settings get saved and we can share those across documents. So it's very easy for me to display my dimension in multiple multitude of ways. And I can always edit the settings behind those dimensions if I want to adjust things like witness lines as well. Don't also forget that you can change things like the format text size. This means you can be nice and consistent with all your dimension text size right from the beginning. As you can see, I just forgot to do that there. So let's just drop down to my detail dims and this should set the default text size to 10 right at the beginning when I first placed those dimensions. So really nice little feature. So a really, really nice way to improve your workflow with custom units in Vectorworks. So next up, we're gonna look at some of the new features for DWG and DXF collaboration. So you can see that I've got a plan here and for some reason I decided I want to maybe show some crops. You can see I've cropped not only the 2D viewport but the 3D hidden line viewport as well. And I would like those to come out into AutoCAD when I export exactly as I've shown them. Now this doesn't necessarily uh, come so easily in 2024 but if we go to the new export settings in 2025 you'll see some really interesting new settings. So here we go, we've got clip objects basically that we can actually select. Now we've still got the original setting, but if you do actually clip the viewport uh, using the clip, basically that will export as you'll see in a second. Uh, the other really nice thing on the later versions of Eptowitz, you only need to select the particular sheets you want to export. And this was a bit tricky before um, in that you had to export certain sheets or design layers as well. So you have incredible flexibility over what you export and how you export them. Um, basically, I'm just going to run through a couple of the other settings as well. Now, you can actually export invisible classes if required. If you leave that off, obviously, they won't be exported. You can also do things like um, actually filter what you're exporting. And if you really want to, uh, you can actually apply a mapping class. So if you wanted to give your DWG files to a customer or a client in a really set format that was different from your own class structure, this would make it extremely easy. You can set up a mapping list to translate your classes over to their layers, AutoCAD layers. So basically by applying a mapping file, once you've got that set up, this would make this very consistent and very, very straightforward. So a couple of nice settings in there. Um, I'm actually not gonna go ahead and do the mapping right now, but we just thought that was interesting to show you. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's export this drawing. 
and let's see how quick uh, we can actually take a look at it. Let's just check our final few settings. Don't forget to do things like export fills if, if required and also things like whether you export images and image files along the way. So there's a ton of different settings. Now it can be a little bit fiddly to get this right. So do remember once you get it right, you can save these settings in Vectorworks to recall them and share those with your clients as well and your colleagues. Now there's another new setting I just wanted to mention while we're here. And basically what this does, it allows you to decompose Vectorworks plugin objects, things like landscape areas and hardscapes. Now, if you do want to, you can also click decompose all this means things like windows, doors, walls, all the Vectorworks objects from Vectorworks Architect will also be decomposed into nothing but lines and hatches. So it means that there'll be a lot less blocks. Um, remember, AutoCAD uses blocks when things are grouped or symbolized or plug-in objects in Vectorworks. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the export. That was pretty quick. So I'm going to open up a software that I use to view drawings. I don't use AutoCAD, but basically if I go to my project file that I've just exported and select it, I can right click and open with eDrawings. And this is a really nice little kind of free AutoCAD viewer that I can basically just use to double, double check my files. So it looks pretty good. I can see that the objects have come through with the crop there. I'm not sure why the circle isn't displaying on the uh, 3D crop. Maybe that's a 3D one, but you can see it is cropped. So that looks really, really good. And I'd be very happy to pass this on to my fellow consultants and issue this DWG having checked it and just check those options as well. So I think they will agree. These new export options make cropping viewports much easier and the ability to decompose some of our Vectorworks objects if required so that they don't translate into blocks is very, very welcome indeed. Um, we can also do things like measuring on eDrawings, but really, if you've got AutoCAD, you'll see the difference with your exports in Vectorworks 2025. So the next feature we're going to look at involves some of the new features for importing DWGs. So I'm going to drag in uh, the survey project for this Water's Edge property here. And basically, let's have a look at some of the import settings. Now, do remember to set the units, either meters or millimeters, depending on what you've got. You do have the option to georeference, and that's something obviously I covered in my other video. And basically, let's have a look at um, how we're going to kind of like translate our classes. So again, we have a really nice mapping set of files on the other side when we do import. So again, this means that if you're working with regular consultants, engineers or surveyors, you can easily map those classes over to your Vectorworks classes at the import stage. So this is very, very straightforward to do and something that I think a lot of customers will find really useful. You can also select basically what you import. So if there was a particular problem with the import and you know there was information that you just didn't require at all, you can actually turn off those items and not import them. Now, finally, uh, a really nice setting here is that you can actually set the pen colors to black and white or set the pen and the fill to black and white as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So rather than it coming in uh, lots of different colors, you know, sometimes those light yellows were quite hard to read. Basically, I'm going to click OK, as well as actually referencing the file. You can see it's all imported in black and white, which is really nice. And basically, I can use my D for distance on my workspace to measure the distance there. Don't forget you can measure in a viewport using the tape measure tool. But as you can see, the information has all come through rather nicely in black and white this time. And it means that basically it's very, very straightforward for me to work with. Now, I'm just going to take a look at the model in isolation for a second for this little project. And I can't resist showing you the wonderful on-screen view control once again. A really, really nice little widget just to adjust your views and basically makes 3D viewing much, much more straightforward. So just before we carry on looking at the amazing new features in Vectorworks 2025, I just wanted to reach out to you and offer my teaching and training services that I offer all over the world via Zoom. I'm an experienced architect with over 20 years experience, but I've been a Vectorworks user my entire career and I really love teaching people from small practices to individuals, whatever level you currently are. I can help you on 2D, 3D, BIM, or various visualization workflows. I also really love teaching Vectorworks in combination with things like Twinmotion, Enscape, and D5 Render for 3D visualization. So wherever you are in the world, if you'd like to reach out and improve your Vectorworks skills, please book a call or drop me an email and I'll be very, very pleased to help. I look forward to hearing from you soon. So now I want to focus on exporting to a Revit files. 
Now, you'll notice that with the traditional item, you could only really do it in Vector, it's 2024. However, now with 2025, if you Revit export to the cloud, you have not only all the different options of Revit, right back to 2024, you can actually use the cloud, the Vectorworks cloud services, to process the Revit file. Now this is amazing. What it means is basically you're not locking up your Vectorworks drawing or your modeling while you're actually doing those exports. And some of those, you know, they could take a little while. So here we can see my cloud services have already started. Basically the file is pending. That means it's uploading essentially. And I can basically look into the progress. But notice I can spin my model around, I can carry on working, and I'm not held up by the Revit export in any way at all. So if I do want to, I can go into my Vectorworks Cloud Services folder, and you can see some of the extra drawings that are available in there. But let's just have a little, little check on basically where we are. So this one's now queued. We'll shut down those other items there. You can see a little progress bar, and if I click Information, here is the information about what's happening. Um, basically, this won't take that long and we'll be able to check back on this in a few moments. So I really, really like the cloud services for the Revit export. Kind of means that I can just crack on with other work and basically uh, let's go ahead and actually import a Revit file. So there's a couple of features on the import side I also want to show you as well. So basically when we import Revit files now, um, you'll notice that we have lots of filtering options for what we actually do want to import. Not only that, how they're imported. Some Revit items will come through. Uh, basically, you can translate them into geometry or even vector its objects, things like walls and slabs and things like that as well. And finally, uh, here I'm actually going to Revit that reference file, a uh, reference rather. So that means that basically, if the engineer or the consultant sends me a new Revit file at some point, I'll be able to basically just click update and reselect the new file. So you can see my Revit file has now imported. Let's take a quick look and see how this looks. Uh, all the meanwhile, by the way, my cloud services has been running in the background. So we'll be able to kind of check on this and see what's happening. So let's go up to our cloud. While we were doing that Revit import, it was busy doing our work for us. We can click on information. You can see that Revit export was really fast. It only took a minute and 27 seconds. Here's the file that I can reveal. It was only 13 megabytes. And finally, if I do, I want to copy uh, a link to the clipboard. I can send that off to my client and they can download it from my cloud. So very, very straightforward. Now, we'll go back to the Revit file that I just imported a moment ago. Because I did the referencing, you'll see that all of the classes are now contained within that reference viewport. This is a very, very neat way to contain all those classes that all prefix with RVT, as I asked it when I did the import. And finally, I still have the ability to use my kind of visibility control uh, on the visibility tool to basically turn classes on and off. So don't forget to use number seven on my keyboard shortcuts on my enhanced workspace, a really nice keyboard shortcut there, just to turn off those elements within the viewport. So really, really useful to be able to kind of like look at the geometry and sort of explore that Revit file that's been imported. Now, if I did want to, I could also basically use the ability to turn those layers or classes back on. So just use the visibility tool and very straightforwardly they ghost out and then you can click on them to show them again. Don't forget also, we've got the wonderful clip cube and a little trick on the clip cube, if you don't know it, is to select the clip cube. Not everybody knows this, that if you can actually kind of click, you can rotate that clip cube around. So I probably need to know the angle to rotate it to. Uh, but let's just see if I can kind of get that lined up a bit more with that elevation. Well, it's pretty good. It's probably not perfect, but basically I can drop the clip cube, generate a section through my model, and then right click, create section viewport, all from this Revit imported survey file. So let's just click OK and see how fast this generates on my sheet. And you'll see that it'll create a really, really nice drawing in no time at all, directly from the Revit file. So let's come out of dark mode um, back onto the drawing and you can see it's actually a really useful drawing that I could use uh, from that survey and I could always explode this if I wanted a line drawing. Now don't forget that the Revit file was uh, referenced. So if the surveyor or engineer sends me a new file, I can just reselect the new one and basically re-import it and just generate it again once again and that viewport would actually stay there as well. So really fantastic features for importing, exporting and collaboration with Revit and DWG. I think you'll agree, some amazing new features in Vector is 2025 for you to start using.